السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله. الحمد لله رب العالمين. والعاقبة للمتقين. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله إنها تذكرة. فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه سبيلا صدق الله العظيم. Honorable brothers, my teacher, Sheikh Dilan Sab, if he accepts me, and our honorable qaris, mashallah, the Mawlana Sab at the end, and the idara here, and all the brothers here, our grandfathers and fathers, and brothers in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. If I may take this off, is that okay? It reminds me of the day I got married. <laughs> if you just, just have a look at it. Um, you know, when I came from upstairs and I entered this masjid, in this hall, Allah blessed me and I saw the people at the front here. And by Allah, it reminded me of something. And I want to share that with you. We were reading today in our class <coughs> in the Shama'il about a great Sahabi by the name of Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was a rabbi he was a Jewish rabbi and when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Medina al-Munawwara he went to check he went to see he had previous knowledge about this Prophet and he said I went and he said, I looked at his face. Istabantu wajhahu. He said, Attahaqattu wajhahu. I looked at his face. And I, I realized, Inna wajhahu laysa bi wajhi kaadhibin. And I realized that that face was not the face of a liar, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you can see, mashaAllah, the nur on the faces of the believing brothers here. Allahu Akbar. It really, mashaAllah, is. It's, you can touch it, it's palpable. This is the blessing of Ramadan. People have been working, striving, standing in worship, reciting Quran, and you can feel the barakah. It's incredible, mashaAllah. Abdullah bin Salam, he said, the first words that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that he heard from him were, At'imu ta'am. What did he say? They feed people food. Feed people food. Wash the salam. Wash the salam and spread salams. Give salams to each other. Wasid al arham. And join family ties. Join family ties. Hey, families, come together. Sallu wa nasu niyam. And pray whilst people are sleeping. Tadkhulu jannata bis salam. You will enter jannah bis salama. And on this point, before I go on, I really want to emphasize one thing here. I'm not daring enough to tell you to hug the person next to you. And we were discussing this, really. What would be beautiful is that you were to hug that man next to you. But don't worry, I won't put you through that. But one thing I want you to do, and I think it's so important, because when you look into the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, and we're here, we're here for a purpose. We're here looking for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look into the seerah, when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to tell the Sahaba when Laylatul Qadr was, what night it was going to be on, what happened? Some of the Sahaba started to scuffle. They started to argue. And because of that argumentation, because of that rancor in the heart from one to the other, the knowledge of that night was taken away from the Ummah. And because of two people, and because of their hatred that they carried in their hearts, believing men and women, that hatred they carried in their heart, a people of La ilaha illallah, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah, people who have that in their heart, and because of that hatred they had towards another believing brother, they deprived the whole nation 
of that incredible mercy. Do you see how dangerous it is? So, for that reason, it would be beautiful to start with, if you could internally, I'm not in charge of your heart, I'm just about managing here. And you, if you could just look at your own heart, and look if there's anybody in that heart that you have hatred towards, some ill feeling towards, some rancor towards, for the sake of this blessed gathering, and for the sake of this blessed Ummah, for the sake of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go on then, if you're daring enough, forgive him. Go on, only you can do that. It's a matter of the heart, nothing more, nothing more. Go on, do you understand what I'm saying? Hey, if there's somebody in your heart that you really hate, then for the sake of Allah, forgive them. And if you've done that, then we may stop. We have many hadith which speak about the merit of this night. And the first one is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the father of the cat. Because he used to carry a cat in his sleeve. Large sleeve and carry the cat radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He narrated the most hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qama laylat al qadri iman wa ihtisaba. <laughs> Narrated by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. Hey, whoever stands the night of Laylatul Qadr, hey, stands in worship, not stands in the street, I'm standing because Allah said to <laughs> No, standing in worship. You know, standing in worship, standing in namaz, standing in front of Allah, talking to Rabbul Alameen. Whoever stands, Iman and believing in Allah and seeking reward only from the one worthy of seeking reward from Allah The sins, all his sins that have passed from the previous years Can you imagine them? Have you ever counted how many there were? Anybody ever counted? None of you, you weirdos. Why? There's a brother in Lataqiyah. Allah have mercy on those brothers in Lataqiyah. That brother lives in Medina to Munawwara today. He had a diary, a diary in it. He recorded every single sin he ever committed. And he would take it to his mother. And his mother would look at it. And he would seek forgiveness and then he would cross it. Where are those brothers? Where are those mothers? Where are those fathers who gave that tarbiyah? That's a man not from the previous generation. A man who's alive today and lives in Medina al Munawwara. Allah blessed him. Rasulullah invited him from Syria and now he lives next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Allah give us tawfiq. Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the believers, at tahira al naqiya the, the pure lady, the chaste lady, the beautiful mother of the believers. May Allah give us benefit through her. She narrates a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يجاور في العشر الأواقل من رمضان And he would يجاور أن يعتكفوا And he would, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم would do اعتكاف and as our blessed Imam Sahib, may Allah preserve them, make dua Allah give them speedy shifa, inshaAllah. He, they mentioned today in their lesson how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do itikaf every year. Sometimes in the first ten, sometimes the middle ten, sometimes the last ten. And so this is one of the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would do itikaf, and anybody who sat itikaf, they would know. It's one of the greatest things you can ever do. I know a brother who gets a hard time at home. His wife's a bit mouthy. Only very few women are mouthy, obviously. Hey, I heard him in Etikab. Wallah, I heard him in Etikab. He goes, SubhanAllah, if I knew it was so peaceful in here, I would have come a long time ago. Let me tell you, brothers, it's incredibly peaceful in here. Allahu Akbar. One thing you don't hear is, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, alhamdulillah, wallahi, I'm not joking, you might think I'm trying to make it up. No, I'm serious, because you are away from dunya. You're away from dunya, you're with Allah, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
I would encourage anybody, you know, who, who has tawfiq, do itikaf. It's one of the greatest things you can do. I, I, and br there's a brother, Hai Wickham, he accepted Islam on the hands of Imam Sahib. His name is Ibrahim. When he sat itikaf in Banbury, is Hai Wickham, he's a Wickham lad, a Wickham wanderer. He, 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 he wandered to Banbury. He lives in Banbury. He was doing itikaf with Imam Sahib and came next to him, a brother, his name is Khalid. And he sat one night in Hattika, one night, one night he sat. Ibrahim saw a dream. He saw that all the people that were there, they had six nights of so that they had passed in Hattika. They had six massive pits, or a massive pit between them and Nala Jahannam. A massive pit between them and Nala Jahannam, the fire of Hellfire. That brother who sat for one night, man, said, he saw he had a small pit. Allahu Akbar. The point is, even those who sit in Nafli Itikaf, what are they doing? They're putting a hajj, they're putting a barrier, they're putting distance between themselves and Nari Jahannam. And that's what they're doing. And so I would encourage you to do that. She said, Ya Rasulullah, or oh, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tahabru Laylatul Qadri fil Ashr al Awakhir bin Ramadan. He said, Search for it. Tahadri, anybody who studied fiqh, you have this tahadri. Uh, if you don't know which way Qibla is, you're traveling on the service station, you don't know which way the Qibla is, you know, where the Qibla, Kuski this now, you know, who can see Qibla? If you don't know, what are you supposed to do? You can't just say, Bismillah, Ira, Bismillah, you can't do that, you know, it's invalid. And you have to do tahadri. You have to try to guess. You've got to try to put some effort in trying to say, oh, Maybe this way, maybe that's right, east, west, where's the satellite dish, you know? Okay, and you've got to do tahadri. And things don't come for free. Things do not come for free. This is Jannah. This is Allah. This is Rasulullah And they're not cheap. You must put some effort in. You must sacrifice. And Alhamdulillah, you're doing so. This is tahadri. It's brought you here, searching for the mercy of Allah. And this is very important. So remember this, today is the 27th night. There's not the end. Perhaps maybe it's already been, maybe it is tonight. You've still got one more night left because a lot of people switch off after tonight. Tomorrow morning they're like, I'm done, bro. I've got two fasts left, three fasts left. Forget Tarawi. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed's gone. He won't know we're here or not. <laughs> Do you see? Hey, hey, forget it, bro. Done now. Alhamdulillah. No, no brothers. No brothers. All the way to the end. All the way to the end. 29th night left. It's incredible. Don't give up yet. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, or he used to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as narrated by Sayyidatina Aisha, that when it would come to the last 10 nights, if the dakhil al ashr al awakhir, he would sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ahyil layl, he would keep awake the entire night. Wa iqadha ahlahu, and he would wake up his family, wa shadd al mi'za, and he would tighten his belt. And two things here. One is he would stay awake the entire night. Second, he would wake up his family. So the family perhaps used to sleep. Okay. Hey, but the point here is there's a seriousness. It's very serious. Was shipped the mitz, was shipped the mitz, and he would tighten his belt, which is a metaphor for either he would it was time to work, or it was that he would refrain from conjugal relationships. So again, we have a lot of things like this that sort of tell us. Search. So what you're doing here, you should intend. I'm fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet That's why you're in here. Now, brothers, in terms of Laylatul Qadr, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, and you heard this today beautifully in the in, in the recitation. Bada al Billah min Shaitan al-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And verily, we sent down it in the Quran fi Laylatul Qadr. So this, this Qur'an descending was from a local mahfuz, from the preserved tablet, as a whole into the, the house, the Kaaba, the Baytul Izza in the heavens, all in one go. That happened during the night of Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr has this incredible sharaf because of the Qur'an coming into this sphere. Then the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received Qur'an over 23 years from Jibreel alayhi salam. Whenever it was munasib, whenever there was a need, whenever there was a question from a sahabi and so forth, 
the Prophet ﷺ would receive wahi. And this happened over 23 years. And Allah told the Messenger of Allah, he was given this knowledge of how to compile, where to put the ayahs and so forth. Now the reason why it's called Laylatul Qadr, people differ, they have different interpretations. Some say because the taqdeer or your decree, what your, you know, what is allotted for you for that year, is that news is given to the angels and they have that news and then they carry back their business. Others say no, Qadr, well, like in Urdu, Qadr means what? What do we say, don't you? Do you know what that means? No, you know. Qadr, what does it mean? Yeah, good value, respect. Okay, so this night has this name that Qadr means value, respect, because it's more honorable than all other nights. And also some say because good action in this night has more value than any other night. Qadr, that's why it has this, it says incredible Qadr. Allah has given it honor. And then they said, um, you know, the other reason for why it has Qadr is because as Imam, in his Tafsir Khazan, Imam mentions that the angels flock into the, the earth. There's an exodus of angels just entering into this, uh, onto this planet. And that obviously gives it more value on that night because of the presence of the angels and so forth. Then Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Hey, what do you know what Laylatul Qadr is? Hey, you don't know the true meaning, the true reality of this incredible night. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahad. A Laylatul Qadr, it's better. Worship in it is better than a thousand nights. A thousand months. Huh? Thousand months, not thousand, thousand months, which is nearly over 80 years of worship. Why? The question that we ask is why? Why have we got this night? Why do we need this night? And they said, because as Imam Malik mentions, Mata, there's possible two reasons for this. One is because when the Prophet ﷺ was shown the lifespans of this Ummah, he found it very small, very, very short compared to those who came before us. Nuh called to Allah for how many years? 950 years he called people to Allah. For 950 years. And this Ummah, their mean age is between what? 60 and 70 the most. How many of your friends lived up to 60? Uh, how many? It can, your turn can come any day. So they're short. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, looked at this and he felt you know, they were short. Allah did not let him feel this for too long. Allah sent this verse down that, Oh Ya Rasulullah, that your Ummah has this gift from Allah that if they worship Allah during this night, Allah will multiply their worship and give them the worship of 80 years. And people see many, inshallah, the other like, The other reason is that people of Bani, there was a man the Prophet mentioned from Bani Israel who did jihad in the way of Allah for a long time. They said that he um, carried his armor in the way of Allah for a thousand years. For a thousand years he was carrying his armor doing jihad. So the Sahaba were really saddened by this, that these people took all the reward. 1,000 years they were doing jihad, we have a short life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted this night to this ummah. In order that they, because they have short lifespans, that they multiply. Inshallah, strive and multiply. Allah wants to give this reward to you. Had Allah not wanted you to, to be forgiven, if Allah did not want you to have this multiplication of reward and get nearer to His mercy, He wouldn't have invited you. There's so many brothers here who have not been there. Then he comes since last year. There's some good in that person that he's here. Apart from his beautiful hairstyle and quite chilly, cool beard and you know clothing and everything else, mashallah. I saw some very wonderful young men around. Hey, there's something in you. You do have something. You have a role to play. Your friends are on the straight path. How many of them, mashallah, they changed, they left their old ways. They realize that there's a day that's going to come. It's called the day you will die. That's what it's called. That's what it's called, the day you will die. On that day when angel, um, the angel of death will come and he will look at you, maybe in Tottridge, maybe in, I've got to get this right, Castlefield, okay? Maybe in this area, somewhere. Boy, when your turn comes, 
You are not going nowhere. He will take you. Allah sends, they say, four angels who pull out this ruh. One, they say, at the right leg, one on the left leg, one on the right arm, one on the left arm. And they pull. And they pull the soul out of the body. And if it's a believing soul, it comes out so beautifully and softly. Allahu Akbar. You know, on this same night, I remember this in Damascus. A man, his name was Abu Qasim. He used to wear trousers and shirt. He had a small grey silver beard. He had permed hair, curly hair. Sometimes he wore a hat, sometimes he didn't. His son was an electrician. He used to walk around with a bag sometimes on his back. He used to pray in the masjid, sometimes wear a jubba. Beautiful young man, beautiful man, old man. On the same night, subhanAllah, it's late at the 27th night. I remember entering into the masjid of Sheikh Al Akbar, Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi in Damascus. And when we entered the masjid, there was an aura, there was this awe in the, the, this awe in the masjid. You could feel something happen. So we asked the people what happened. They said somebody has, had died. And then we found out later it was Abu Qasim. And I asked his son what happened. He goes, Wallahi, that night he came home. And he took a bath, and he broke his fast, took a bath, and quickly wore his juba and went to the masjid. He didn't say nothing. When he went into the masjid, he prayed his khatam of Quran behind Sheikh Taha Sukkar and Sheikh Muhammad Sukkar, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the Sheikh of Sheikh Sam al -Nas. And he finished, and they prayed Salat al Tasbih. And then all night he stayed in the masjid. Then, just before Sihri, he went and he um, rolled up his trousers and he started to water and wash the courtyard. You know, you come into the fuara, the water fountain, it's beautiful. And he started to wash the, the courtyard. And he finished washing the courtyard and then he went and he lied down and he died. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Hey, there's people who die in a car crash after coming from a nightclub. There's people who come, who die in, in, in pubs and clubs doing haram, with haram clothing on. And their body has been built from haram. They have, their children have raised from haram. They die. Brothers, that day will come. And, and I, I am trying to scare you, yeah I am. That day will come because that's reality, you see. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mawd. You're no better than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah, his nizam that he had to go through this. And it wasn't easy. Mawt is not easy. I mean, he's Aqa alayhi salatu salam. He's ma'asoom. He's Allah's Habibullah. Yet, death has its own kayfiyah. And so that day will come. And your jinaza will be, first your family will weep and cry over you in your houses. And then somebody will wash that janazah. Perhaps it might not even be your own son because he doesn't know how to wash the dead. And he's quite scared to touch dad because, you know, I've never touched a dead body. No, seriously, think seriously now. Then he'll ask his friend, please, yeah, wash my dad. Allah have mercy on you. And there this man is lying there. And he spent his, he built a courty here and there and he's driving the top, top cars that you can ever, ever imagine. And, you know, he didn't even have tawfiq to teach his own son how to wash his body. And then people will carry that janazah. They will bring it into this masjid. And the same imam they will, imam they will backbite and slander and swear at and call name. He will read over that man. He will pray over that man a dua of maghfirah. Then they will carry that janazah. In that car, people will follow it. People will give charity here. Uh, Fulan gave this, this, this. Then they will carry that janazah to Wickham graveyard. That's where they'll take it. And then lower that man into that grave. And that boy, that son, that brother will cry. He will cry because he's lost his dad. But he won't know what his dad's going through. Or what that person, that brother's going through, that son's going through, that dad that is going through, that ummi dad is going through. Because once they're lowered, what happens? Once they're lowered into that grave, they put a slab or something over it and they shut it. That's what they do. This is your father and you're putting him into the ground and closing 
a, a, a grave and you're leaving them into the, into the ground allowing the Kirin Makura and everything else that's inside that ground to come to him and, and touch him and so forth. But when that closes, bro, see with that, the Janazah obviously sees what's happening. He sees his children, he's trying to talk to them, he can't talk to them. He's trying to reach out to them, he can't reach out to them. Some are going to be chilling, they don't need nobody. They gave their life and so for Allah and Rasul, they will be on cloud seven. Alhamdulillah, Allah will honor them all the way. And he'll be happy working how his son half is a Quran, the other one, mashallah, pakka namazi, and reaping from their benefits, from their du'as and everything else. However, when they go into that grave, his actions will come, if he has any. His actions will come within good and bad. And his, his actions will come, everybody has actions. His wealth will come. His family will come. Those people he loved so much and you know gave everything for that money which he you know safely kept in that pocket in that bank and everything, even that they will go. The money will go. And the only thing that will remain with that person is are his actions. Now you ask yourself, bro, what have you done to take him to that grave? What have you done? Have you asked yourself that question? What are you waiting for anyway? You're 20, you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, you're 60, you're 70. What have you done? How many times have you read Quran in a night? How many nights have you stood, stood all night worshipping like the Sahaba and the Tabi'in did? And in reality, the answer to all of that is not much at all. Not much at all. For that reason, it is absolutely imperative that you wake up because you sat in this masjid maybe 15 days up with others and it's all been the same. Did Tawbah, I went out, I did nothing about it. How long are you going to carry on for? How long are you going to carry on for? How many people were in this masjid last year that are not here tonight? Do you have people who passed away in High Wickham? You have how many? Five, six, ten, huh? Loads, go on. They're not here. That Baba just used to sit here, one there. Where are they? They've gone. So we must wake our brothers and sisters. There. And Allah is merciful. Allah is, you know, the one of the du'as we've been encouraged to read, Allahumma innaka afubun. Say it, Allahumma innaka afubun. Kareemun. Tuhibbu. Al-afwa. Fa'fu anna. Allahumma innaka afubun. Kareemun. Tuhibbu. Al-afwa. Fa'fu anna. That means, oh Allah. In Naka, you are afuhun, forgiving, kareem, kind, generous. That's what, oh Allah, Allah in Naka afuhun, to hibbul afuhun, you like forgiving, you love forgiving. Fa'fuhanna, forgive us. Allah loves forgiving, you want an example for that? There's a hadith narrated on the thoughts of Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Umar was there, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to smile. And you could see his beautiful teeth. Allahumma salli alayhi. And then Sayyidina Umar asked, Ya Rasulullah, why are you smiling? What makes you smile, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, he was told about two brothers, two Muslims, on the day of judgment, competing, arguing with each other in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One would say, Ya Allah, he, zalamani, he, he oppressed me. He backbited me. He called my daughter names. He called my wife names. He ripped me off in my businesses. He used to say things about me. Ya Allah, zolamani. Allah will say, take revenge. How do you take revenge? Hey, by giving, on Yom al it's not about come here, let me give you a punch back. There's none of that, bro. On Yom al nobody wants no punch. They want your good deeds. That Hajj you did, you gotta pay it back. You gotta give him your reward of Hajj. Here you are. That was for that backbite. I backbited you and your family. Um, here's my rose, reward of my rose. This is because I called your mother a, a name or whatever. Here, this is because I robbed your house. This is because I, I, I led your son astray. And he's gonna keep giving. 
until he has jack. He has nothing left. He doesn't have nothing left. But it's not finished yet. Why? Because he hasn't paid him back yet. There's still more. He says, Ya Rabbi, he owes me more. Then he will say, well, now because he's got nothing to give, now he needs to take my bad deeds from me. So I've already taken all his good deeds. So he's got his own bad deeds to carry. Now nah, bro, I ain't finished yet. Now he's gonna take my bad deeds. So I backbite, he's taking my backbiting. Eh? I've done some all the sins. And the man's gonna end up with what? All sin. Not only his own sins, but the sins of another person. Now, imagine that. When the Prophet saw this, eh? he started to cry, he started to cry. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to that servant who's got all the good deeds now, he goes, look into the heavens. And he looks into the heavens and he's shown glimpses of Jannah. They have beautiful silver palaces, beautiful gold palaces with pearls and everything. And he looks at it and he says, wow, they must be the houses of the prophets and the Siddiqeen and the martyrs. And and, and you say, Allah say, hey, there it has a price. And you say, Ya Allah, what's its price? He says, its price is that, you know, you forgive him. Its price is that you forgive him. Don't take his rewards. Hey, don't take his good deeds. Just forgive him. If you forgive him, then its reward is Jannah. And he says, Ya Allah, I forgive him. Look how Allah is Rahmah. Allah's Rahma is this. Oh my servant, take by the hand of your brother and both of you enter Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Hey, this is Allah, the merciful. They have another story of a bad, bad man. You have many bad boys here, don't you? It's wicked, come in it. Bad boys. I know you. I know some of you. I worked in the prison. I won't tell them, don't worry. Hey, 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 there was a bad man, bad boy. You know, bad boy, okay? No good deeds, nothing to his name. He's known as the bad boy, bad man. You know, everything haram. When he died, and I end with this, when he died, they said, he was lowered to his grave and nobody, nobody wanted to go into his grave to give himself pain. Everybody was afraid. Nobody wanted to go in because they were afraid going into that grave could bring them harm. Allah sent this man, Faris. He was riding on his horse, he came. He didn't know the story. He was just a simple, you know, Bandasi, you know, he didn't know Jack. And he came and he stopped, he said, oh, Fulan, come here, do us a favor, yeah? Go into this grave and just do talqeen of this man, just say to him, you know, remind him Allah is one and, you know, the Prophet, Rasulullah is our Prophet and so forth. So, okay, take care, Mary, Mori, Bani, yeah, you know, I gave him some, he went in as well. He went into the grave and he gave talqeen. What did he do? He gave talqeen. Then he went, they threw the mitti over him and he went. People started to see dreams of that man. They said, Yeah, Fulan, how are you? People see dreams, don't they? They see people, they dream. How are you doing? Because, you know, I'm chilly. Allah's blessed me. He forgave me. I'm in the end. People meant, you know, this right. like, oh, hey, you know, he was Bunda, he was this, he was that. How can that be? And the news got to the Amir of that city, the mayor of that city. And, and he, they were told, he was told, they were told in the dream, how he goes, that guy, man, he prayed for me and Allah forgave all my sins. So which guy? That guy. The same one on the horse. Yeah. So they, the Amir was told. And then he, he, they sought after, after that man. They found him. They invited him into the palace and made a big dinner for him. He said, yeah, Fulan, what did you do? What did you say? And he wouldn't say nothing. Said, Please tell us, what did you say? Said, you know, I don't know nothing. What am I going to say to him? He said, all I said to him was, I whispered in his ear. I said, if you were my guest, yeah, I would sacrifice a camel. But you're the guest of Akram al Akramin. You're the guest of Akram al Akramin, don't worry. You're the guest of Akram al Akramin, don't worry. That's what he said. He said, if you were my guest, Muhammad man, I would do, you know, a camel, uh, just sacrifice a camel. But you know, my guest, you're the guest of the merciful, the most kind of all kind. And Allah took that word and forgave him because of that. And that, this shows you this man's sahbah being around pious people. For a moment, even after his death, Allah gave him. 
Allah gave him success. Hey, find good people to hang around with. And I end with this. Have you ever been outside one of these grill shops? Anybody been to these takeaways? Yeah. Have you ever traveled to Manchester or South or to eat, you know, some lamb chops or something? Have you ever been? There's one you ever had lamb chops? I'll take you one day. Hey, hey. Rabi al this is really, imagine this, seriously. Rabi al radiallahu ta'ala anha. She went, she went, she was standing outside this man's shop, mahal, and this guy was grilling meat. Was he grilling meat? He yeah, made lamb leg, yeah? And she's looking at it. And look at it, starts crying. So it's like going outside flame grill or something. They don't actually do that. Hey, if they had, and looking at it at the window and start crying. I mean, what's that guy going to think inside? See, you know, he's got no money. No, no, seriously, he's going to think that, isn't he? He's hungry, he's day short. Just give him, you know. Rabbi Alawi did the same thing. That man looked at him, he felt sorry for you. I'm sorry, do you, would you like some? He goes, no. He goes, I'm only looking for Ibrat. I'm looking, I'm thinking, SubhanAllah, this is a dead animal, okay, that has entered the fire. On Day of Judgment, Insan will enter the fire alive. This is a dead animal that's entered the fire. A Yom al Qiyamah, Insan will enter the fire alive. And this animal has entered in the dunya. And the dunya, we're going to enter in the akhirah. And so that's why it's so important if you don't want to be like that. And damn, I bet you don't want to be like that because Jahannam is not like dunya zag. Is different. For that reason, brothers, for the sake of Allah, Allah is just. Allah is most merciful. Allah loves you. He created you. He loves you. But you should not be the way you are. You should be grateful. Say, Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah. Wear what you want. Nobody's stopping you. Wear all the designer clothes you want. Seriously. Right now, as a priority, wear what you want. Have the hairstyles you want. Really, do what you want. Inshallah that day will come when we can work on that. Right now, do what you want. At least put your head down on the floor and say, thank you, Ya Rabb. You made me so beautiful. You gave me every ni'mah I can imagine. You know, eh, wallahi, eh, Kashmiris, Pakistanis in England, they have every blessing they can imagine. Look at the houses they have, Masha. Look at their cars, their children. There's, uh, eh, there's no shortage, nothing. So for that reason alone, please, this is a beautiful night. Turn to Allah and say, Ya Allah, please free me from the fire of hell and give me tawfiq to be firm on your path, to thank you, to serve you. you know, this is one of the greatest things you can do. Allah give us tawfiq. I apologize again to our ulama here if I've offended anybody. I should, you know, I'm not worthy of standing here and speaking in front of such giants, you know, really. You're so lucky and I am I'm incredibly honored. I'm so excited, not because of you guys, I love you, but because of your son. I am honored, Allah has blessed me to be near this man and I can't believe why we don't have gatherings like this at Doha. Because you have absolute Jews being distributed. You know what it is? The truth is you don't know what you got. The only day you'll know is when he goes, that's the ulama, this is the truth. Blessings, you don't appreciate them. Mum and dad, who appreciates mum and dad? Oh, I love mum and dad. You know, when they go, then you start crying on that grave and you think, Ya Ami, please come back. I wake up, you know, I'm just going to massage your feet. Ya Ami, please come back. Once I'm going to bring what you like to eat, you know, serve you, it's too late. That's why, before it's too late, thank Allah. May Allah give us topic.